Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Matt Jarbo. This is Three Buck Theater. Uh, this video won't be monetized at all. I'm not trying to earn money on it. I just read that George Romero passed away at the age of 77. And that hit me like a ton of fucking bricks. Just a ton of bricks. It's something that's been in the back of my mind for a long time. Every time his name pops up, every time I see him come up with something new. I'm always waiting for that day that that inevitable rip George Romero that that you know was going to happen, but every time recently it's been him talking about producing a new of the dead series, this time Road of the Dead, uh that would be interesting uh to see going forward and it's so weird when your heroes die. And yeah, Romero has been a fucking hero of mine for a long time. I mean, you know, he's always done everything by the beat of his own drum. He's always done everything um, to buck the studio system as much as he possibly could. And hit or miss, hit or miss, the dude changed the face of fucking cinema. You know what I mean? Like, he he changed it. You go back to, to the Night, Night of the Living Dead, the original, and just like... Even by today's standards, it's still a good movie. I mean, like what he chose to do in terms of breaking um, racial stereotypes at that time was almost unheard of uh, for a small little indie film, an indie film that <laughs> that failed <laughs> that, to properly register with the copyright office and therefore is now in the public domain. I mean... The movie has been remade, remastered, reimagined so many times. We know the story by heart, but it's one that speaks to the true terror of what might happen in a situation like that all alone uh, on a farm dealing with like racial tensions and things like that. And then, of course, Dawn of the Dead, you know, like 10 years later. And that movie was a movie the first time I saw it. I had to watch it with the lights on. I was so scared. And I was like in my early 20s, the first time I saw it. And I, I love that movie to Helen back uh, because of the ideas that Romero was trying to espouse, because of the um, the thoughts that he was trying to put out there and how he, was, how he was speaking to society and our consumeristic culture and everything else. And, and then you move into like Day of the Dead with Bub, you know? And it's just like, it again speaks to these different narratives these different ideals uh while still being very creepy and still being very romero you know i mean he's he's had some up and downs <laughs> i think halloween 3 comes to mind <laughs> in terms of of like oh yeah it's a romero movie but it's also it's it's a romero movie it's it's not a halloween movie uh you know but then then the of the dead franchise clearly took kind of a uh, a different hit, you know, or went a different way with Zack Snyder's remake of Dawn of the Dead in 04, and I thought that was fantastic. Uh, but then I loved that in 2005, Universal, not wanting to lose the rights to the Of the Dead franchise, uh, let George come back and do Land of the Dead, which, while didn't have as much of a cultural impact, I believe, as uh, Dawn of the Dead back in the 70s and, and, and the Night of Living Dead back in the 60s, it, it still definitely spoke to where his mind was at and how he looked at zombies. And a lot of people didn't like what he what he did in terms of uh, of zombies there. He, you know, like kind of giving them um, like feelings, almost like almost like thoughts, like they were evolving from their base primordial state, sort of. And I, I liked it. I liked what he was trying to do there. I very much loved how he went about it. Uh, it wasn't the most perfect thing in the world, but to me, it's still it's a George Romero, Night of the Living Dead movie, and I'm on board with that. I mean, Diary of the Dead, which came out three years later, was a little five million dollar point, uh, you know, point of view found footage film that I went to the midnight showing. Uh, it was at one theater in San Diego down by the border on Valentine's Day. I left a Valentine's date early. It wasn't going anywhere. It was a bad night. But I left that early and went down there to go watch it because I, I so desperately wanted to see what Romero was going to do with point of view found footage and zombies, seeing as point of view found movies or found footage movies are pretty much my favorite. And Cloverfield had come out just like 
a, a month before, you know, um, I mean, even, even before then, one of my all time favorite Comic-Con experiences, probably my most memorable Comic-Con experience of uh, being in Hall H when the full cast of the Avengers was there was in 2007 at Comic-Con, George Romero was interviewed for an hour by Max Brooks. Yes, Max Brooks, author of the Zombie Survival Guide and World War Z and son of Mel Brooks on stage interviewing George Romero for an hour. And I sat there in utter awe the entire time. Two of my favorite creative people out there, Max Brooks and fucking George Romero, talking about zombies for an hour. It was just, it was fucking fantastic. It was amazing. Uh, and it's something that like I can always hold that true to my heart in terms of just my like, oh, one of my full geek out moments was that, um, you know, and then of course you had survival of the dead, which is a Hatfield McCoy thing. And, and, and Romero, you know, like Romero, you can always tell is trying to do things his own way. He's not trying to be like anybody else. He's not trying to act like anybody else. He will always, or well, he was always doing it how he felt he wanted to do it, telling stories through new narratives, telling stories through new filmmaking styles, and trying to be different, rather than always homogenizing everything through the studio system and of being afraid of originality. Love him or hate him, at the end of his life, Romero, Romero is a staple of not only filmmaking as a whole, but independent filmmaking, the father of modern day zombies, the father of z zombies in general, in terms of pop culture. I mean, granted those two are the same thing pretty much, but a person that like, I'm, I'm so shocked. Like I am like he was 77. It was going to happen, but it was like, it's so shocking because it's so sad because it's like a piece of pop culture history died today. A, a person whose influence on a medium that I love passed away and it's like i'm trying not to cry i'm honest to god trying not to cry because i'm like i'm so sad because i've always wanted to meet him and just be like say thank you because i'm a huge zombie fan in general and i've written like zombie audio dramas i wrote like a 208 page 18 episode season of, a, of an audio drama that i want that i tried like mimicking you know romero and that like just trying something different and how i thought he might do it and I'd always wanted to like meet him and just talk zombies and, and everything. And um, that's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. But, you know, hopefully his legacy will continue. And it won't continue like in the vein of, let's say, The Walking Dead, which is a series that I like as well. But it's not, it's not Romero. Kirkman, as much as he tries to be Romero, is never Romero. I don't think we're ever going to get anyone truly like him ever again. And that is both fortunate and unfortunate. Because we have a person who tried his entire life to be different, to step outside of the box, tell stories his way in both the independent system and the studio system. And then I'm afraid we'll never see that again because people will never want to try. But I hope that all indie filmmakers out there that loved Romero like I did can, can look at his life, his legacy, his passion, and emulate that to the best of their ability because that that's... That's how you breed originality and creativity. And uh, yeah, so anyway, um, I just wanted to get my thoughts out there. I'm super upset uh, that Romero passed away. Um, I hope wherever, if you believe in the afterlife, I don't know. I hope wherever you are, you're, <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're breaking boundaries and kicking ass and all that jazz. Anyway, uh I'm uh, Matt Drabo. This is Three Buck Theater. Um, I yeah, I just had to get that out. So anyway, I will, I'll talk to you guys later. Um, bye.